Start your engine. Welcome back, I'm Gert from Aim Small, and today we are tackling another topical issue. So what can this be that's so heavy on my heart that I have to explain it? Well, today it's not about accuracy. Today it's all about speed. Now, like, I am not a gunsmith, I'm not an airsmith, I'm not a airy-fairy mechanic, anything of that. So when I need to have somebody work on my gun, I take it to somebody that knows how to do it. Yes, I've watched plenty of YouTube videos before and I've buggered up my gun plenty of times before. So today I'm looking at a different option. So how can the normal shooter out there, the, the normal run-of-the-mill chap that's not mechanically inclined, get the maximum out of his FX impact? Okay, or basically any FX for that matter. Doesn't matter if it's a Bobcat, Wildcat, Supercat, Black Cat. Doesn't matter. Alright, so there's basically three, no, there's four big things that you can do. Right, the one is not easy, so let's show you that one first. Okay, so one of the things that you can do is putting a bigger plenum on this. So this is the 72cc uh, plenum um, with a block everything. This is going to go onto my cannon though. I'm not going to talk about this, but this is not for the average guy. You need some special skills or very good detail to attention when you watch one of Ernest Rowe's videos how to install this. But they are, however three things that's easy to install and easy to get right okay the first thing is that you can install a dual flow air system all right so this is a humor dual flow port and the reason i prefer the humors is that the hole is a lot bigger if you go and look at the fx itself the new barrels that's got the pin hole the pallet hole and the dual airflow hole it's a heck of a lot smaller than this and that's a worth about 10 to 15 feet per second if you go and test it in that regard so the first thing you can do and this is quite easy to do you just need to need a lighter just remember to move the o-rings before you heat this up because this is usually loctited loctite loctite how do you pronounce that anyways there's loctite on there you can remove this put a dual flow on now this will immediately give you some, some extra oomph the second thing you can do is you can replace your pallet probe with a pin probe. And there I go with the PPs again, the pin probe, pallet probe scenario. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to test both those scenarios. All right? So I'm going to put my pallet probe back into the FX. I'm going to run the scenarios from minimum all the way to maximum, seven speeds. And I'm going to do this with a couple of different barrels. But let's not confuse the matter. So the first thing is how much difference of speed will I get in the pin probe versus the pellet probe All right so that is question number one question number two will be the airflow All right what is the difference between the normal uh, pellet probe versus the dual flow and I'll test that also in different barrels of the same length so with me I've got two barrels exactly the same length both of them are 500 mil the one is my Lothar Walter my new baby on the block the other one is my standard FX. I'm not testing accuracy. I'm checking speed. Exact same length. The one has got a pin probe. The other one has got the dual flow system on. And then the third element that I'm going to test, and this one is a bit more expensive. So those two jobbies are quite cheap. The one I'm going to test that's a little bit more expensive is barrel length again. All right. So you can see this is a 500 mil FX barrel versus a 600 mil FX barrel. So I'm going to show you guys the three easy steps to get the maximum power out of your gun without having to open up the internals. So it's easy to remove barrels and replace barrels. That's one of the key elements and one of the great things about FX that most of the competitors can go and take a lesson on. It's the changing of barrels and the ease of barrels. And then change of pin probe, pellet probe and the dual flow. And that's about it. I'm going to use exactly the same silence on all three things. The one thing that you just need to note, and I had a lot of queries regarding the Walter Lothar barrel, a Lothar Walter barrel in this regard. This thing is unshrouded. Because it's unshrouded, it's unchoked, but the unshrouded part is, is key to this scenario. Versus the shrouded barrel, there's a massive difference in sound. You can't believe it, it's about 10 or 15 decibels 
the last time I checked on my, my decibel reader. So there is a difference with the shrouded versus non-shrouded barrel in that regard. And this Lothar Walter cracks like a whip. All right, so let's get into the scenario. Right, so the first experiment for today, this is going to be the difference on the 500 millimeter liners. Both in the scenario, I've got the pin probe currently installed, but it doesn't matter if it's the pin probe or the pallet probe for the next exercise. This exercise is all about your transfer port. Is this a pellet one or the dual flow transfer port? Okay, so that's test number one. What is the difference in speed? And I'm going to shoot it from low power to maximum power. Just to give you guys the indication, is there a bigger impact on high power or a bigger impact on low power? Let's head into this one. Now this is as close to a stock standard factory FX 177 as you're going to get. Um, yes, and this works for a 22 as well, exact same principle. So this is with the pellet probe. I removed the pin probe. This is the standard 500 millimeter FX barrel on it. And it's got the normal pellet transfer hole in it. So this is as stock standard as it gets. Let's see what it does on speed, shooting all the way from minimum to max, and I'll record as I go along. Right, let's quickly look at the averages so we can set a baseline for the rest of the testing today. On the graph, I averaged out the shots that I did. So we went from a minimum of 705 feet per second all the way up to 923 feet per second. All right, baseline established. Let's see what happens if we change the pin airflow to the dual airflow port. All right, that was quite interesting. Let's add, add up the numbers and go and have a look. All right, I knew that the Yuma dual airflow system was going to increase the speed dramatically. What I did not expect is such a big variance at the high power ranges, up to 51 feet per second. Now, later on, I did a different test where I only took out the, or I changed the Yuma and the normal pellet pin or a pellet hole and the speed difference wasn't that big unfortunately i didn't make a video of that but i'll show you the conclusion in the last section when i add up all the different elements at what the maximum speed increase is that you can expect next up the pellet probe versus the pin probe I tried every combination to put these things the next eight, to each four, other, four, synced everything. One, I just two, could not four, get it done. After four hours, I eventually gave up. Five, but you'll four, see the results four. just now. Nine, After four hours of editing and just getting nowhere fast, this is the best way to explain the difference so the pellet probe is the blue one at the bottom the pin probe is the orange one on top and although the lines look exceptionally wide apart the average spread was only 10 feet per second which was extremely low i expected a lot higher so i had to repeat this exercise which leaves me on the next one after a barrel swap, I put the LW barrel in, also 500 millimeter, and this is where things got weird. It ran exceptionally fast. Although the average spread was only 13 feet per second, yes, the pin probe was still faster, 13 feet per second. But look at that top speed, a whopping 990 feet per second. My goodness gracious, that was the fastest speed on the day, and it wasn't even the longest barrel. So that left me a little bit confused. But let's go on to the 600mm barrel and see what the difference is. Test number three proves the conclusion. If you add the pin probe 
you will get some extra speed. In this, this scenario with the 177, the average speed here was 10 foot per second. And that was on average around about 11, 12 if I look through all three different barrels. So conclusion, pin probe will make it a little bit faster than a pallet probe. It will make a bigger impact if you shoot slugs, but that's a different video. This brings us to what is the total speed I can get if I add the pin probe, I add the dual flow, and I add 10 centimeters to the barrel length. All right, so let's look at the total results. For this one, I'll show you the actual readings of the chronograph. So you can compare this with the baseline, but don't worry, I made a graph about this one as well. This is the 600 mil FX barrel with a dual flow port. Minimum power. Interesting. Let's go and have a look at the results. Let's start at the beginning and go back to the three questions. Is the dual flow faster than the pallet hull airflow? Yes, it is. Is the pin probe faster than the pallet probe? Yes, it is. Is the 600 mil barrel faster than the 500 mil barrel? Yes, it is. But the weird thing is, it's not that big a difference. Yes. I did get a whopping 42 feet per second faster with all three elements on the maximum power and the average increase in speed was about 27 foot per second. The net result is actually impressive. 2.3 foot pound energy additional without opening the gun. This is checks external th small things that I change. Hmm. What an interesting exercise. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for that like. See you in the next one. There is, however, one thing that keeps me awake at night. Why was the LW barrel faster than the 600mm FX? Is the choke of the FX? I don't know. That's all, folks.